Welcome to Sunday's edition with Vegas and Jim. Today's date is 10-13-2019. And Miss Vegas has a great watch list for us. Okay, well, good morning, everyone. For Sunday, the 13th of October, we have a nice list. We have Bed Bath Beyond, Match, Microsoft, Apple, HPJ, Nat, and SSI. So let's start with Bed Bath Beyond. Uh, fantastic news on Bed Bath Beyond. Finally, after almost a year of searching for a CEO, uh, Wall Street and investors cheered the most about the announcement of Mark Tritton, who is uh, the new CEO. He came from Target, or Target, as some people like to say, and um, he will actually be taking over at Bed Bath Beyond, not until November the 4th. Um, they have, they do have an interim's uh, chief executive, um, so he will be transitioning to his job November the fourth. And uh, you know he's got fantastic experience. I mean he's been in the retail business for a long time. He used to work at Nordstrom. He worked at the outerwear maker Timberland. He's worked at Nike. So he has an extremely impressive resume in the industry, and. Um, they did a fantastic decision to bring him on board. You know, one of the big focuses he'll be doing is to turn around the private label strategy at Bed Bath Beyond, trying to make it more profitable. Obviously, he's looking to drive growth, and he's actually going to um, increase probably their online presence and uh, obviously accelerate Bed Bath Beyond's business transformation. Um, so definitely, like I said, he doesn't start till November 4th. I think it's going to be exciting for Bed Bath Beyond. I think it's one to watch and definitely swing trade at this and trade on the options and made money from all angles on this stock. Jim, let's hear what you think about Bed Bath Beyond's chart going forward. Yeah, as I pull up the yearly and the 20 day chart here. There we go. We had a yearly high of 1957, and we had a yearly low of 731. I had a pretty, pretty hard sell-off here on the TTM squeeze chart. And then we bounced up and created a double top to find a support right around $11. And then she pulled back, and then we got that news out. It was kind of getting upgraded, by the way, when it started hitting this bottom here. And then the new CEO news came out. We almost hit that yearly pivot point, which is right here at 1358. So at 1358 is what our target's going to be for next week. And I do believe we can get it. But we'll look over here at the 20 day. And we did have an ascending breakout right here at 1213. And she did break out and created the head and shoulders and pulled back. And then that double top came in on Thursday, pulled back pre market after hours a little bit. And then bounced right up to new highs to that 1306. Actually had a 1315 high. So we want to try to get it up to that resistance level of 1358. That's going to be our next target. We do have to break that resistance here at 1306. is 2018 trend lines. The blue ones are the 2019 that I was playing off of. So we're back up in here. We're almost going to hit that yearly pivot point at 1358. So we're going to be looking forward to watching this this coming week. I think I'm very bullish. I know we're very bullish on this trade. I see a pullback maybe to the 1213 at the at the lowest, but we do have a low, low support here at 1366. But I think no lower than 1213 is going to be a strong buy. And if we can break that resistance level of 1306, we'll go to 1358. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be match. Well, you know what? Uh, you know, Facebook's trying to compete with Match, but I don't think they're a match for Match. Um, you know, Match, if anyone knows, I mean, they obviously own Tinder and they have uh, had a very strong 2019. The shares are up nearly 80% so far for the year on Match.com. Uh, so definitely keep match on your watch list. I have seen a lot of upgrades to an outperform as well that came out this past week. So definitely keep a watch on match. 
And I'll be looking to trade this really from the options angle, um, not necessarily trading it from the stock. So I don't currently have a position, but I'll be looking for one this week and keeping a watch on match. And I'd like to hear, Jim, your thoughts on the match chart because that's going to help me decide where I go in and where I get out. Well, you called the very bottom of this one. Not the very bottom, but oh, I think it was right around the beginning of the year, at the end of the year, you called this thing out when oh, it was up. Remember 40. it was under fifty bucks. Yeah, it was under fifty bucks. It was actually forty five thirty four is when you called it out. And then it went ahead and it ran all the way up to the to the to these higher areas right around fifty eight. So it's had a very nice bullish run with very few corrections. And right now we're looking at a head and shoulders, as you can see, with a neckline right there at 79.27. So that's going to be our target. If we can get back up to that high, it's, and we're going to over here to look at the 20-day right now. And I want to show here on the um, linear channel chart that we are right above that pivot point here at 73.76. But this cam always pull back to a support level to the bottom of this, but when it when it still stays above the bottom line of that linear, it's still bullish in my opinion. So we're going to go back to the 20 day and this is where we're going to kind of draw another resistance line right here at 75.23. Then we're going to have another one right here. You see where this is kind of bottomed out right here. We're going to throw another one right in between. and We're going to call it right here at this number right here at 76.99. Kind of adjust that just a little bit. Then I want to put another support right down here at 71.17. So that's going to be our low, low support. Our third one will we'll go like this. We've got our, our, our first solid support. It's going to be here at 72.40, and that's pretty low. It's probably a little bit too low to be calling that. So I'm going to look for another trend. I'm going to put it in. It's kind of, this thing been up and down. So we're going to put one right here at 73.53. So we got first support at 73.53, and then we've got a, a low. If it doesn't hold that support, it can drop to 72.40. Right now, we're at a, at a, a pivotal point right here at 74.18, and it can rise up to the next three resistances with a long of 79.27. So we have 75.23, 76.99, and 78.06, and then the <coughs> final strong high resistance where you really want to start thinking about taking your profit or getting out of the trade at 79.27 but we have a hard resistance at that 78 dollar area that's probably where i would sell because we tried to do a triple top here and it just couldn't do it we had a lower high we did have a double top and then that last one was a little bit lower so that 78 dollar area is where you need to probably figure out if you want to get in or out of the or get out of the trade and the next one we're going to talk about is going to be MSFT Microsoft. Okay, so that's the next one? Yep. So on uh, Microsoft, you know, I, I really like this chart. I mean, uh, to me, it's got the Bollinger Bands uh, squeeze is coming. Um, looks like the stock's ready to have a continuation. I'm also seeing the MACD signal line cross. Um, you know, Microsoft is coming out with some new keyboards as well. They're finally launching two of them. Uh, one has a dedicated shortcut key for Office and Windows 10 emoji menu. And these actually become on sale October 15. Um, they actually already have like a line of Surface keyboards that go along with their type covers. Um, but this new one is that it's going to be, um, I guess, really convenient for people that like those emoji uh, icon feature. And I mean, if you're into that, I guess you'll like this keyboard. Um, the other thing too, for those of you that have Netflix, um, you should really try to watch that documentary on Bill Gates. Um, I thought it was really interesting. Uh, it's really incredible to really see um, his philanthropic journey and what he does beyond Microsoft and you know a lot of the things he's endured and all the things he works on separate from his company. Um, I mean, it's just, phenomenal how one person is doing so many great things. Um, so I think it's definitely something worth watching aside from the stock. So Jim, what are your thoughts on uh, Microsoft? Cause it looks pretty good for continuation. We were definitely bullish on this last couple of weeks. 
and it has had a pullback to, to it did have a pullback to support level last week last Tuesday and that was a pretty good time to get in I have it as a red line support at 135.61 to 135.88 and we busted past that so we're getting back up to that 20 day resistance level up to a triple top on the year as you can see over here at 140 139 with a 14237 high. So we're getting back up here again to that resistance level and that 14139 is the one you want to pay attention to if it starts to pull back maybe take profit and it can pull back to this 13946 if it breaks up to that Monday to that 14139. We are very bullish on this trade though. Keep that in mind. But I do believe it can pull back to a correction. You see it does have these sharp sell-offs here on the 20 day so this is one you don't want to get caught in but still yet if you do it uh, uh, maybe a week later or a couple days later it'll bounce right back up but if you want to play it smart take it at resistance get out at resistance wait for a small pullback and you'll get another chance to get back in this trade so we have a low I'm going to got another support level here at we have the low support at 135.61 to 135.88 we have that second support area right here at one, let me see what this is, 137.92 to 138.28. And then that first support channel, that strong red line support that needs to hold and bounce on up to that next resistance is going to be that 139.46 or the 139.14 area. So that's a new channel. I'm going to color in blue because then I'll know that that'll be your first solid support, your second, and your third. So, and we got to break the resistance of 141.39 to get it up to new highs, which it can run up to new highs. And we have another resistance right here at 141.79. So there's your three resistances levels right there with a 20-day with a high at 142.37. And that's, and you're willing to stop this uh, tape at any time and write these numbers down. Just always remember they came from I Love Stocks. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be one of the good plays that Miss Vegas did last week, and that's Apple. Okay, Miss Vegas. Okay, so we're going to talk about Apple, and we could see that Apple's had a fantastic week. As a matter of fact, took advantage of those pullbacks. If you notice here, Jim can show you on Wednesday. Uh, mentioned a lotto idea of the 235 calls were nine cents which is nine dollars and i mentioned it again on thursday at 33 cents and look at that the green screen right above you could see that those calls went all the way to 225 uh high of day i think it even went to 235 but last screenshot was 235 so you know there's so much money to be made in options a great opportunity for some lotto ideas and boy apple was a great payday um can we see a continuation on Apple? We might. Um, so far, it's pretty bullish. It's had quite a lot of upgrades as well. But again, anything can happen with a lot of these tweaks that we're seeing in the market. Um, you know, it can go up, it can go down. Let's hear, Jim, your thoughts on Apple. Yeah, I got in the Apple option and I got bought more of them on Friday. So I got back in the trade. And we're going to look at the Apple chart right now. Beautiful little run on Apple. It does have its pullbacks as you see but they don't they cut they don't come very often and with all the turmoil last week or the week before that and then the good talks with the trade talks with china this was like a china pullback in some sort of sense in some sense but then it kind of consolidated right in this area and bounced on up now these blue lines are my extended trend lines you can see i've really been on top of this thing and i'm going to probably clear this chart out and start fresh come monday but I have a pullback support at 235.74 if the stock doesn't break the double top. We're going to pull up the 20 day and let you look, or not the 20 day, but the daily. And you can see on this equilibrium chart here, linear, I mean, lineal chart that we're about ready to hit that pivot point and break that pivot point. And it can run up here to this new high of 238.74. And that's going to be Apple, but we do have a resistance we got to break, and and we're hitting this. We did break the resistance after hours, which was right here at 237. Let me change this up here. I don't want to get this too confusing to you all, but we did have like a, a consolidated period, and it did break up 
and hit that top of that line and pulled back. So we have a resistance level we had to break again after the pullback at that 237.10. And the next resistance we got to get up to is going to be that 357.57. Now if we can break that 357.57, we're going to go up to that 230, I mean not 357, but 237.64. We can get up to that 238.74 area, and that's going to be a hard resistance for another pullback to this channel right here. So we've got a low low support here at 235.74. We got the second support right around here at 236.52. And we need to break this resistance level of 237.10 to get past the last resistance of 237.57, way on up to 238.74. And we're bullish on Apple. We do believe it can go higher. I've got kind of around a 255 area target, 250. And but we're, we're now starting to get to the tops here, so I'm going to be taking profit on my option come Monday. I'm going to get out of the trade if we can't break this 237.57. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be HPJ. Okay, so HPJ. Well, I actually like this one here. This is, I would like to probably trade it. It's called the Hong Kong High Power Technology. If you take a look at the chart, it's got new 52 week highs. It's also got the overbought stochastics and some really good strength in the stock. I'm going to anticipate some range contraction and see the stock going over the $5 mark. If it does get over the $5 mark, I think you should watch for that. Uh, I think we could see some higher highs here. So Jim, let's hear about this one here. Well, this is a beautiful one to point, have a little lesson on right now. As Miss Vegas says, we did hit break the 52-day high there at 474 on Friday. And you can see like, that upward trend we've had all the way up to the top here. Now, for the last 20 days, we created an ascending triangle. That's when you have like a flat top trend line of 470 and you have lower highs. And this is just a beautiful example of what ascending triangle breakout looks like. We started to squeeze at the end and then we had the breakout to 474. Just a beautiful chart all in all to show that. And these are just one of three patterns that I study real hard when I'm looking at stocks and at day trades. I use them on a 20 day, on a yearly, and also on a daily one minute when I'm scalping or when I when I think it's going to pull back. But this is a beautiful example of an ascending triangle breakout. And that's going to be HPI. So I'm going to give you some support levels on this trade right now. We're going to draw this run right here, right at 461. Going to be your low support. Then this kind of muffled in here, so I'm going to put another one right here at 472. You can see where them two candles hit. It's confirmation that we do have a support area here, here at 472. So definitely we'll pull back to that. That's no problem. But we would love to see it hold this 470. But this is on a 20-day chart. It's not moved that much, but it's a great example of what you would call and with the trade talks coming to an end I think this stock can go a lot higher and this is going to be and so we're going to have a low support right down here at 461 and then we've got a 444 is going to be your low low support so we have 444 461 and we want to break that 472 to gain new 52 week highs on it and that's HPJ and then another beautiful call by one of our traders in the room. And Miss Vegas is going to talk about it. And it's going to be Nat. Okay, so I actually, um, that, uh, we actually gave this as a swing trade uh, over a week ago. And it was alerted around the $2.82 mark. This is the Nordic American Tankers Limited. This keeps making new highs, pocket pivots, and constantly having new volume surges i still think it's super strong and i still think it should be something to either continue to day trade or just continue holding a swing trade or take a swing and just keep riding this channel um i think this company nordic american tankers uh, you know shipping stocks are heating up and uh you should definitely keep this one on your top watch there's a lot stronger than some of the other ones out there jim your thoughts on nat as we showed out here, North American Tankers is a tanker stock, and it 
uh, shipping stocks have been bouncing up on the scanner here, and I think with this trade deal, we might see some more um, bullishness out of the trades. And, we, and I hope you all keep a good shipper's uh, watch list going because it's always something to have in that sector to be watching. They, when they run, they all run together. So let's look at the at the chart. You could look at this beautiful run that was called out in the room. I mean, all the way, and it was called out way down here, right around the 222 area. And ever since then, we've almost doubled, almost 100% gain in a week on this trade. So you got to think, okay, 100, we got 100% gain on this trade in a week. So you kind of would expect it to pull back a little bit. I have a low support at 346 for a solid. That's where we had this previous high right here. And that's where we my, my lower third support is here at 346. My second support is going to be in this channel here at 372 to 378. And then the first solid support, which could be a little bit higher. And I'm going to adjust this up to right around the 396 area. So somewhere between the 10 cent span of 386 to 396 will be your first support. The resistance that we do need to break is going to be a solid 430. And I'm going to type that in right there. And that's the resistance we need to break. These are a 52-week high that we hit Friday on this trade. And it did happen during pre-market. And it also happened during day, daily trading hours. And it has pulled back a little bit. So remember, that, that number right here, that 346, is a very solid support area. And if it does knife on us, I guarantee it will rebound off that 346. And then bounce back up and start to create a new channel. I don't expect this to go to five to ten bucks very soon, but I do expect to see a channel form between that 346 and somewhere with within that three four dollar area. Right now, I think it's overextended, and we'll just have to kind of watch it next week. But we are definitely bullish on this trade and on a lot of other shipper stocks. And then the last one we're going to talk about is going to be SSI. Yeah, so SSI, you know, this is the Stage Stores uh, Inc. And, uh, you know, this company is in apparel. And uh, if you actually take a look at their website, it's called corporate.stage.com. And, uh, you know, they uh, have been around, honestly, a long time. It's a family-owned business. And um, then they went, you know, they were based out in Houston, and I gotta say, Houston's got so many great companies. Um, but this company, it, you know, this stock is one to watch. I mean, they have a e-com site and um, they have a lot of like really interesting things to watch. But I gotta tell you, the reason I like it on SSI, it's overbought pocket pivot and a parabolic rise. And I love when I see a parabolic rise because this stock's in the midst of a rally. And sometimes they get extended, have a little pullback, but then it makes higher highs. So definitely keep this one here on a watch. It's also made new 52-week highs as well on SSI. And, I mean, it's still under the $3 mark. Um, so can SSI go higher? I think so, for sure, um, based on how it's behaving. I'd love to see this get to... I guess the next resistance I'd be looking at for me would be uh, 299 So, you know, definitely $2.90, $3 range is where I'm looking at. And that's kind of where the next pivots are. But you can see the last week, the buying on the stock, look at that channel. It keeps going higher, higher, and higher every single day. you got to pay attention to these volume bars and pay attention to this pattern on the candlesticks. Jim? Give me your thoughts on this SSI. Yeah, I see the stock pulling back to 211, right here to that previous high that I've circled here to create kind of a strong support. Then I see it retracing back up and hitting a resistance back to 250. So we have your first support here at 224, and then the 211 would I be I would call a strong support area. Now if we pull back to that 211, it's going to be a strong buy. And then we'll start to go back and retrace back to that 243 area. As you see, once we hit that high here, it pulled back pretty strong to 140. I expect the same thing to happen right here. We got a descending pattern going on at the end of the day Friday. And I'm going to pull this up to a daily one minute. You can kind of see it pulled back. 
and then you got another support right in here so I'm going to put this 229 area in here also too you see where it pulled back there and bounced on up create an ascending triangle and then had a breakout and then started pulling back some more so this is how I'm going to look oh I didn't put that in there so let me see that right there at 236 that's where it's going to be if it pulls back to your sec first support your second support and then you have your first one right down here at 224 and we got to break this resistance if it starts to move up we have to break that resistance of 250 and then we're going to take it in 10 cent increments up to 260 will be your next trend if it hits that top of that linear channel at 260 it can pull back again to this 247 so it is kind of choppy at, at once it hits a new high and it breaks out it pulls back and it hits a support so that's how I look at it, and that's how I see it. A low, low, low support here at 211, 224, 229, and then that 336 isn't going to be nothing. I mean, it'll hit that for sure come Monday morning, and the resistance we got to break is going to be 250. And that's it for the report, Miss Vegas. You know what? I think this is a good summary of uh, some good penny ideas, stocks under five bucks. Um, you know, sometimes like people have been saying, you know, uh, not posting as much of these penny stocks. Sometimes it's just because they just have not had a lot of follow through. Um, so you just sometimes got to trade different things to still generate capital. So um, definitely we'll try to, you know, look for good penny stocks to trade. But, you know, Jim can tell you we love penny stocks. I uh, just haven't seen them move the way they used to from the, in the past. So we'll definitely be focused on that. Um, but, you know, again, we want to look for things that are going to move. I don't want to be in a trade where it does nothing all day and now you've made no money. So um, definitely that's why I look at options as a great opportunity to still trade and still make good money. So, again, the focus is there on both. But, again, we need to see things that are going to be moving so that people can make money. Um, so again, feel free, come by, visit the room, got a trial for you. You're welcome to come by, follow, subscribe, hit the like button, and we'd love to see you and chat with you this week. Have a great week trading. This is the Aftermarket Report, Sunday's edition, October 13th, 2019, and we love stocks.